Let's open up this glove box and take a look. Whoa, is that the crash plate that's been causing me all these problems? That's crazy. Hello, happy people, and welcome to your Moment of Zed, the YouTube channel dedicated to the most beautiful car in the world, the BMW Z3, or as the Irish call it, the Z3. I'm Mark, and today we're gonna do part two and hopefully the final part of fixing our sagging glove box. But first, we have a BOGO, buy one, get one free on Zed of the Week. Let's start in California with Isaac's 1996 silver 1.9 liter five speed with only 60,000 miles. Now Isaac has completely redone the cooling system as well as installed later year roll hoops. That's a really beautiful car. And I think the first one we've had in California, at least in a while. Thank you so much, Isaac. Beautiful, beautiful vehicle. From the left coast out to the heartland, Indiana with Eric's 1999 M Roadster, also in silver. What a beautiful car and really, really nice photos. Thank you, Eric. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for submitting your beautiful cars. And again, if you'd like to see your car on Moment of Zed, check out the instructions down below in the description box, and we'd love to see it. And now back to the glove box. So first things first, at the suggestion of many of my viewers and many people on the internet over the years, I'm going to go ahead and remove the anti-submarine crash plate from the glove box door. This is very simple. There's four screws on top to separate the lower part of the glove box from the upper part. And then you have to remove the latch from the glove box that will give you access to the plate itself. The plate is also held on by four screws. So all we have to do is go ahead and unscrew those. And mine just happened to be held in by one screw because all the little pylons, the plastic pylons had broken off. So it was even easier to remove. Next, we're gonna fix the tabs I broke last week. And there they are. And all we're gonna do for those is just make a cardstock template and using some scrap plastic I had, go ahead and cut new tabs. Here's the new tabs uh, set in place so you can see them. Of course, they're gonna go behind on the back side of the glove box enclosure. I'm going to secure them using JB Weld Plastic Weld. You can find this at any hardware store, Home Depot, or auto parts store. I bought mine off Amazon. I'll go ahead and put that link in the description. First, I've roughed up the surface of the dash using some 120 grit sandpaper just to make the epoxy adhere better. Then I've gone ahead and mixed the epoxy according to the directions and applied a small amount where I'm gonna put my new tabs on. Then I'm gonna go ahead and place the tabs. And once they're in place, hold them there for a couple minutes and then clamp them. They're supposed to set in about five minutes or so. So that's gonna take about an hour or so to cure. While that's curing, I'm gonna go ahead and fix something else I broke last week, which if you remember was this small piece of ducting that goes to the vent that's in that glove box enclosure. I'm gonna try and fix it with, of course, duct tape. That's what it's for, right? I'm not gonna be able to film that, kind of tight quarters down there. I'll let you know if it works out. So I went ahead and taped up the duct. Seemed to work pretty well. Not beautiful, but it seems to work. Uh, our tabs have cured and they seem pretty solid. I'm gonna go ahead and put the clips on those. I'm gonna have to stretch them a little bit because now they're kind of double thick. And then it's the moment of truth. Put the rebuilt glove box back into the car without breaking anything else. We'll see how it goes. 
So once I hooked my new tabs behind the center console plastic, I found I had the same problem. The enclosure was hitting against the metal guide on the left-hand side. I loosened that guide. That still didn't give me enough room. Eventually, I took the three 10 millimeter bolts out of that guide, removed it. I then was able to prop up the plastic parts of the dash using a piece of wood, as you can see here. And I reinstalled the metal bracket in the proper position along the side of the plastic enclosure by taping the bolts onto my socket with painter's tape and then using a combination of the small extension, the long extension, the ratchet handle, the long extension connected to the small extension, and my hands. It helps if you're a contortionist. Eventually, I got the metal piece back in in a manner that was uh, solid and ready to finish the project. As you can see, I'm wrapping up that last bolt and now the metal guy is nice and solid again. The plastic is where it should be. I haven't broken anything else and now it's just a matter of putting in those six screws which hold the glove box enclosure and door starting with the one on the far passenger side then moving to the two that uh, are on the center console, the new tabs I built, and then the three, two that are underneath the glove box door, and then finally ending with the one just to the left of the wood trim on my car. And as you can see, once it's all back together, no sags, nice and tight. Uh, it all looks really good. Didn't scratch it up too bad when you open it, still looks correct. And everything's good to go. So just like last week, let's go ahead and take a look at some lessons learned. Number one, and this is the big one, if I were going to do it all over again, I would not have removed any part of the glove box from the dash. I simply would have opened up the glove box door and went ahead and removed the anti-submarine crash plate, thereby lightening it up. Then I would have just went back and tightened everything up again, and that probably would have solved my problem. Now, if I needed the bracket, the one that I showed you last week, that I installed last week, I could have probably installed that just by lowering the dash or the glove box enclosure to where you see it now and propping it up in different ways. I probably could have just opened that door, pulled out the screws, and went ahead and installed that new bracket on top of the old one, reinstalled both of those again without removing any part of the dash. Hey folks, if you enjoyed today's content, you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. New or old, please hit like. Thank you very much for watching as always, and until next time, drive safe.